What's up guys, D2 from D2AOV.com here, bringing you a Darcy guide. Now, Darcy has been around for about a month now, so I've gotten to see the pros play, I've got to see him be used on ladder, and so people are pretty used to him by now, but for those of you who don't really know how to use him or need some pointers, here is the guide, and we're going to be going over all the crazy mechanics of his abilities and what he can do with those abilities. Now, as always, if you want to check this out in printed form, or at least on article online form, you can go over to d2aov.com and check that out and read it at your leisure. So without further ado, let's get started. So Darcy is a backline mage, which means he does most of his damage from a distance. Only one half of one ability is done up close, and that's... Even that's a bit optional, you can do that if you please, but it's not completely necessary to completely blow up your opponents. Now, like I alluded to just there, being a backline main means you deal a lot of damage, and for Darcy's case, it's even more than that. He does not just alright damage, he does ridiculous damage between his dimensional walk and his dimensional cube. Now, what makes him a little bit different from other backline mages is the fact that he is very slippery. Uh, if you catch a Vera off guard or like a Dialchon, they're basically dead. But Darcy has the ability called Dimensional Walk, which allows him to get away scot-free most of the time. And if that's not enough or if that's off or on cooldown, then he can go ahead and portal away as well. Which leads me to his strengths and weaknesses. So, strength number one. Like I mentioned before, extreme burst damage. He is up there with the most bursty mages in the entire game. He, the only mage he probably loses to is Natalia, but again, Natalia has hard to hit abilities, and she is very much immobile, so I think that he can cede that throne to her right now because of the other things that Darcy brings. And the reason uh, the abilities that I mentioned before are do so much damage are the Dimensional Cube here, which scales at a massive 185% of his HP or his AP, excuse me, and his Dimensional Walk, which is an enhanced auto attack. And you know what that means? That you can build both Loki's Curse and Apocalypse and do insane damage off of that from as far as 900 units away. Now, strength number two is that he has a ready-made combo, and not just any combo, but a ready-made devastating combo where he logs you down with portal, you send in the cube, you send in the damage from your dimensional walk, and if they're not Thane here, then they're probably going to die to that combo, especially squishies, so it's, a, it's pretty devastating, and you can catch them from pretty far away, because look at the range at this dimensional portal. Alright, strength number three, relatively difficult to kill. Obviously, he's not like a warrior or anything like that, but compared to other mages, he's very slippery. If you have Dimensional Walk available, you can use that. And what that does is it reduces the damage done to him from 40 to 50% depending on level. And on top of that, it makes him untargetable. So if you're trying to hit him with an ability... That's, you know, auto-aim, something, you know, like Vera Stun, for instance. You cannot aim it on him, and it even makes it able so that he can get away from towers. You know, towers can't target him either when you have Dimensional Walk available. So, it just makes it so hard to track down to not only to lock him down. Uh, by the way, it makes him immune to stuns. If if everything else wasn't amazing already, it's, he's immune to stuns as well. So, even if you land a stun, it's not going to matter. That's how ridiculous that ability is. And on top of that, again, if he's in crazy trouble, then he can just throw back his portal and get away that way. So Darcy, extremely hard to pin down, and that allows him to build very, very bursty in his build um, and and get away with it, right? Uh, sometimes with other backline mages, you need some sort of defense in there, or else if you get if you get you know looked at strangely by another hero, you're going to evaporate. But not Darcy; he can get away. He'll be just fine. And finally, uh, this is another strength. This is a strength for higher tier play, but it's still relevant in certain cases in lower level play. Uh, and the fact that he's just so flexible, right? His kit is extremely good for both the mid and the side lane. Uh, having the dimensional cube to clear the wave and also be able to duel the opponent, duel basically any opponent because of dimensional walk is great. And if you're jungling, he's one of the fastest clears in the game. 
And not only that, but he has a great use for the Mage Jungle item in Loki's Curse because he wants to have, again, the, the empowerment on his Dimensional Walk, the empowered auto attack. And once, once he's finished his first wave of jungle and once he gets that level 4, he can immediately go rotate to a lane, gank, use Dimensional Portal, and kill someone. So it's the trifecta of things that you want in a jungler, right? Sometimes junglers, they clear fast, but they can't really gank very well. Sometimes junglers... They clear fast, they can gank pretty well, but they don't really have any a good use for the jungle item that you get with it. He's the trifecta. He is he is great with the Loki's Curse, he can clear very fast, and when he's done jungling, he can go ahead and gank with the best of them. So, he's an excellent jungler. Uh, and by the way, I, I mentioned that he's great in mid and, and jungle. I bet he could probably play side lanes, he could probably play jungle, or play support, just like, you know, the Joker plays support sometimes, you know, just slowing people down with dimensional walk. He could probably play all roles, but uh, he's particularly good in jungle and mid, and that's what makes him so flexible, because when you're picking him in a draft, you can pick him first, and then what your opponents do, you can you can um, counter what your opponents do with the remainder of your picks, and if, that, if you need to slot Darcy into a different position than you originally imagined, then you can easily do that because, again, of how flexible he is. All right, so with the strengths out of the way, let's get to his weaknesses. Uh, the first thing is that Dimensional Cube is pretty hard to land. This is a substantial amount of damage that you might be missing because you're throwing it, you know, awry or haywire. Um, without Dimensional Portal, it's going to be hard to land. And sometimes, you know, if you're if you're trying to finish someone off, sometimes you'll have to be waiting for the somewhat long cooldown on Dimensional Walk in order to finish them off because you're just haphazardly throwing out, you know, cubes trying to kill people. So that can be difficult. Um, especially in the early game, because you want to level up Dimensional Cube first, it can be difficult to get the damage off and make sure you get it. A lot of times you're using Dimensional Cube as a zoning tool, uh, because it's, it's hard to land because of the 1.25 second delay. And his last weakness, yes, I'm only listening to weaknesses because that's basically it, is that he has no dash. So, um... This the dimensional walk is fine, but it only makes him twenty percent faster. So if you have someone who's really persistent, like a Necroth, he can chase him down and kill him. Uh, it's not really a dash, but they can get you a get you uh, out of trouble in any situation. I would say he's he's arguably easier to kill than like a Liliana, for instance. You can like double dash away, um, but I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a very slight weakness because compared to other backline mages, he certainly has. He's certainly very, very, um, very uh, slippery and is able to get out of dodge at the right moment. Actually, I'm going to attack on one more weakness here just so people don't think he's completely invincible. This is one of the ways I was going to advise as far as countering him, but it, it bears mentioning here. So uh, his dimensional walk, he gives away some of his escape by using the attack on it. So if you use your dimensional walk and you attack, suddenly you don't really have... Uh, let me just turn the cooldowns on. Uh, if you use your dimensional walk, and now you know that's a seven second cooldown. That's seven seconds for someone to kill you. So it would be amazing, probably broken, if he could, you know, use your dimensional walk and then uh, have attack and then have the uh, la the movements and all the goodies that come up with it afterward. But that would obviously be too strong. So if you want to commit to attacking someone, then you have to give away being in that extra dimension and going to make yourself a little bit vulnerable. All right, let's get to Darcy's ability mechanics, starting with his passive, which is Dimensional Force. So when Darcy's attacks and abilities land on enemies, he gains Dimensional Energy, which is the red bar, red bar below his HP. Uh, that depletes rapidly when he exits combat. When he reaches full energy, he restores 20% of lost mana, and then for the next 8 seconds, he gains 20% movement speed. The cooldowns on his first two abilities are immediately reset. And whatever ability he uses will be enhanced. Now, I put, instead of changing this part of the ability, I wanted to draw more attention to that so that people know uh, by putting an asterisk. Um, it's not that the cooldowns are reset, you gain another use of either one of them. And that's important because that means that you're not forced to use. An ability beforehand if you want to have it reset like if you if you know that you're gonna have a reset coming up normally your first instinct is being like oh i want to be able to make use of that reset so let's use the ability now and then it'll reset and i'll get it back like no it just gives you an extra use of it so you can have both abilities still up and then you just get to be you just get to use them twice so 
it's a bit confusing that way, but uh, just it's it's good for you. <laughs> it's just think that it's good for you. Uh, anyway, uh, the maximum energy is about sixty. The way I was able to calculate that is because in the dimensional cube ability description, um, it says that when it's enhanced, he gains ten energy for each enemy hit, and I accumulated a bunch of minions. <laughs> and when I hit six minions, it immediately reset the. Uh, the dimensional force and got him back to full energy and five did not so uh, he has about 60 max uh, maximum energy and we know from the most recent patch that normal attacks provide five energy because it used to do six and now it was nerfed to five uh, so yeah 12 attacks will get you the full energy and it's weird because the way it works is that you can when, when you're attacking someone, you can see like the red bar rising even as he is not attacking, right? Like I'll attack and you'll see like the red bar rise afterward. I don't know if that's like an animation thing or if the it's just actually rising. But you'll see like if I, if I keep attacking him and I get to the brink of the edge of the bar, like there you see. Um, I didn't attack, but I was still like in combat. So it gave me the full energy. So like just by being in combat, you actually gain energy and I don't know that that's just something interesting to keep in mind that you want to continuously be in combat so you can get to the full energy um, okay next part next point is that the amount of damage dealt is not related to the amount of energy gained rather than the number of enemy enemies damage uh, does so if you have a bajillion damage on your on your dimensional cube that doesn't matter it all it matters is how many enemies you hit um, I don't know the exact number on how much uh, Dimensional Cube and the Enhanced Attack from Walk provide, but just from eyeballing it, it looks like 1.5 times the energy. So you'll accumulate energy a little bit faster if you use those abilities. Um, okay, so tips for this ability. Uh, if you are in mid, then you're going to sometimes want to not clear as quickly as possible. Sometimes you just want to auto attack a few minions here and there so you can get your dimensional force up just so you can replenish your mana and you don't have to go to base. It's better to take a little bit longer to clear the mid wave and get your dimensional force up so that, you know, one, you can potentially duel someone a bit better, but um, more consistently you'll be able to be on the map and not have to go back and uh, you won't have to, you know, waste all that time. Um, so other ways you can develop energy you can just kind of attack this monkey here a few times and then when the wave comes up you're kind of you're nearly halfway there then you go attack the wave and you should have full energy so uh, you should try to get to full energy almost every single time you clear the wave unless you know there's a real need to clear as quickly as possible to rotate um, you can you know if you want to you can mess around and just kind of attack the opposing jungler and use the cube on on the mid and maybe try to like zone out the opposing person with a cube or you use your one that kind of stuff just to make sure that you get dimensional energy up like he thinks that you're fighting him but really what you're doing is just getting your passive back up um okay my next point is that uh, Darcy he sometimes when you're finishing up like a wave, or you're finishing up like a jungle camp, you'll you'll get full energy right then, and then you're sitting there like wondering what I should do with this, you know, dimensional force. Right? I want to use one of my abilities uh, in order to make best of use of this. And what you can do is, as it gets all the way up, so you have eight seconds, right, to use one of these abilities. And instead of like throwing out your um, your cube haphazardly, you can wait all the way to the end, and then use your dimensional walk, and then you still have five seconds. To use your enhanced attack, so that's a good way to really spread it out. You'll by that time you'll probably be over to one of the side lanes or have caught up to whatever fight you're in. Especially because you gain sixty percent movement speed if you have a dimensional walk and a dimensional force up, which we'll talk about later. Uh, so yeah, you'll, you'll be you'll be able to join the fight, and that's a good way to kind of maximize the duration of that. So that's one of the that's another tip. Um, and uh, choosing whether or not you use the enhanced walk or enhanced cube really depends on the situation, and we'll talk about that in a moment. All right, let's get on to the next ability, or his first ability, which is dimensional walk. 
So Darcy enters a different dimension for 1.5 seconds, during which he cannot be targeted, is immune to control effects, his movement speed is increased by 20%, and he takes 40-50% to 50 less damage. His next normal attack within 5 seconds is enhanced, with a longer range, that range is about 900 units, which is longer than towers, by the way, and deals an additional uh, this amount of damage, 330-730 to 730 plus 50% of AP, which was nerfed recently. Uh, it was, used to be 80%, but this was raised, so anyway. Uh, magic damage and reduces the target's movement speed by 60%. Uh, that is for about one second. Uh, attacking or using abilities while dimensional walk is active will cancel the effect immediately. What they mean by that is not that it will cancel the enhanced attack, it will take him out of the other dimension. That's all that means. So it's not going to cancel the actual attack. So you can use abilities if you want. And when this is enhanced, his movement speed is increased by 40%, uh, and his HP is restored by this much. <laughs> by 100 to 200, plus 30% of HP, and then plus 10% of his lost HP. So it's really good when he's low on health. Uh, one quick note about this 40% here is that this is 40% on top of the... 20% that you get from Dimensional Force. So it's not like they said, okay, this is 20% and that's 20%, so therefore it's 40%. No, it is 40% on top, which means it's 60%. Um, they don't always do it this way with the numbers. For instance, Marja, I believe her numbers still say like 40% for her first ability, which is basically just 20 plus 20 uh, for the slow for that case. But in this case, it is actually additive, right? You get the 40% here, and you get the 20% from the passive. So he really books it if you use the enhanced version of Dimensional Walk. So if you want to chase someone, if you want to run away, this is fantastic. Uh, so ability mechanics I talked about already for the most part. This is a pretty straightforward ability. Uh, the target is sold for one second, blah, blah, blah. Um, the 60 minute movement speed. And lastly, uh, you have five seconds from the time that you activate Dimensional Walk to use the enhanced attack, which if you subtract 1.5 seconds is you have 3.5 seconds after the effect wears off to use the enhanced attack. Um, this is to avoid confusion where you might think that perhaps... Uh, after you get out of the dimension, you have you have five seconds to use um, the enhanced attack. But in fact, the case is that you have five seconds from the time you activate the attack, which is perfectly fine because it means that the cooldown uh, comes pretty fast as well. So, if we're talking about tips for this ability, uh, first thing, the first obvious things is that this is just a great way to poke the enemy. You could just do it from ridiculously far away. Not only can you poke heroes, but you can hit towers without taking any damage. Yes, you outrange towers. It is absolutely nuts. Um, what you can do, there's a couple of combos that you can do. You can do it either way. I prefer going for attack with the uh, dimensional walk and then cube, but you can also prime the walk, use the cube, and then auto to try to... You, you place the cube and then you slow them down afterward. Uh, the only problem with that, the reason why I prefer the first one, is because there's a cast time for this. So if you're kind of if you're trying to chase someone, you actually might miss your dimensional walk because they're probably running away from you when they see the dimensional walk get activated. So that's that is the only problem uh, with that. So I'd rather just you know hit them with the guaranteed hit and then throw the cube behind them or what have you. Uh, so. Uh, oh yeah, next tip is that when you are, when you're using Dimensional Walk, um, unless you want to use the damage right away, it's best to use the full duration of the Dimensional Walk so you get the full um, benefit out of it, because it's not going to lower the cooldown by attacking right away. So if you think you need it, if you think you want to have the damage lessened on you, then wait out the full duration and then attack. Um, obviously, if you just want to like get your attack off and run away and be in a safe place, that's fine as well. Um, and then, more importantly, this is this is important for when you're running away. Uh, if you're running away, if someone's chasing you, like an Arthur is like on your tail, uh, you want to use the full duration and then attack uh, so that you can get away as far as possible and then slow them down. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're just panicking and go, like, oh, oh, stay away, and you just kind of use your attack on nothing or use your attack, then you, you don't get the full use of that dimensional walk, obviously. Uh, next tip is just kind of an obvious thing. Uh, his, his Dimensional Walk is one of the best Tower Busters in the entire game. It is so ridiculous because of the fact that you can have up to four instances of damage um, between the normal 
the normal attack damage you have, the extra damage from the ability itself, the extra damage from Loki's Curse, and the extra damage from Apocalypse. And the reason why the extra instances of damage is important is because there's a thousand damage cap on the amount of damage you deal deal to towers. So, you know, for instance, something like a Violet, he jumps in, tries to tactical fire it down, it will be capped at a thousand damage, which is problematic for her because, you know, you want to be doing more damage. But for Darcy, you can kind of cheat the system and deal, you know, over 2,000 damage most of the time because you're doing separate instances of that damage and you get around the 1,000 damage limit by just doing a bunch of different uh, types of damage. Um, I don't believe that Boomstick, by the way, does extra damage on towers. It does extra damage on... Uh, See, so that extra, that number on the side was, I believe, uh, just his normal ability damage, not the Boomstick. So, unfortunately, Boomstick doesn't kill towers faster, but it certainly kill other things faster. Uh, one other one tip is that you can chase kills because the tower won't target you while you're in uh, dimensional walk. And what you can also what you can do is if you have um, the your enhanced walk up, you can jump in, attack something, and if you're really quick, like say there's minions under the tower, um, and it was attacking the minions instead of you, it will like in between shots. If you use your dimensional walk, it will not have time to target you again, so you can get in. Hit the thing you're trying to hit, and then get out before it even targets you. And I think I have a clip of that, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you. Um, here's an advanced tip. <laughs> I'm not sure if this will be useful. I'm not sure if, I, if anyone would be able to think of this, but if you're running away and you kind of have a grasp on what their timers are and you're kind of near a monster, like say, um, I don't know, Arthur's chasing you because we're, we're making fun of Arthur, uh, and... He's about to use his first ability again, and he's about to go on to you. And at that exact moment, you use Dimensional Walk. He can't target you, so if he's spamming attack, he will target this min this monster. Then you might get away scot-free. <laughs> so it's a bit of an advanced tip, but I'm sure that someone might be able to make use of it, whether intentionally or not. Okay, so finally, let's talk about when you want to use the Enhanced Dimensional Walk rather than the Enhanced uh, Cube. And the first one's pretty obvious. If you're really low on health, uh, it heals you for quite a bit, especially if you're low because of the 10% of lost HP part of it. Um, and the other obvious time is when you need, you know, two walks to escape. So if you if someone's chasing you, you walk, and then you get it and you walk again, and then you're probably safe by that point. Um, the other time that you want to use uh, both walks is when you want to. You don't have portal available in order to kind of catch someone, but you want to have two guaranteed hits on your opponent because, you know, obviously sometimes, even with a bigger uh, radius for the dimensional cube, it can still be hard to hit sometimes. So if you want to get two guaranteed hits, um, and I know I'm sure that many of you probably feel the same way I do, is like you, you're not too confident hitting the cube, so you want to hit, make sure you get those two guaranteed hits, then that's a good time as well. If you have a really, you know, really fast, really speedy, really slippery, uh, person that you're fighting, then yeah, you want to get both of those hits guaranteed. And um, the last thing, the last time you want to use uh, the two dimensional walks is when you can basically two shot someone, which is common. <laughs> it's actually very common that you can two squat, a uh, two squat, two shot a squishy hero uh, with Darcy if you're facing like a marksman or a mage in the late game and you have your enhanced dimension or your enhanced something up, right? You have your full dimensional force, you can just two tap them and they're going to die. So uh, that is the last situation in which you would use the dimensional walk to, or rather over the dimensional cube. Let's get to the next ability, which is dimensional cube. It's very straightforward. You summon a cube and after 1.25 seconds it explodes and deals a lot of damage. It deals a lot in the early game, which is 800, but it deals a ridiculous amount later on when you have lots of AP because 185% scaling is it's just nuts. I've never seen a number that big in my life. Usually it's hundred under 100% as far as, as far as scaling is concerned for mages. So, oh boy, that is, that is crazy. Anyway, the enhanced version, when you're at full energy, uh, the range of the explosion is increased. And by that they mean the radius, not the actual not how far you can throw the ability. The The range of that is the same. Um, and he gains 10 energy for each enemy hit. Now remember, he that's about 1 sixth. 10 energy is about 1 sixth, so if you hit 10 
or excuse me, if you hit six enemies, uh, think of minions, obviously, then you can get it back. Um, if you get, like, multiple heroes, think of it like an Atalia situation, where if you get multiple heroes, then you're probably going to kill them all, because not only were, are they significantly damaged, but you're going to get your next dimensional force up very, very quickly and just kill them again. So, that is cool. Not, not, not a whole lot to talk about as far as the ability mechanics. One thing to keep in mind is that the actual range of the ability is a little bit smaller. If you look here, if I put it there, sorry, that is not a good indication. That does hit him. Okay, so right there, that does not hit him. Yeah, so it has to be within this, the smaller circle in the center. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're trying to aim for someone. Now, it's a bit different for the en enhanced version because this will probably this will hit him like on the edge of there right like the explosion covers the entire range and the reason for that is that if you catch someone in portal then the enhanced version can hit the entire uh part right otherwise you have to aim for the exact little like golden marks there so if you have an enhanced version just throw it in the middle of the portal and it will definitely hit everyone uh if you have a normal version then you have to kind of aim for the golden mark but we'll get to that a little bit later um so Tips, obviously, Dimensional Cube is best used with Dimensional Portal. Uh, the what, the timing on it, and we'll talk about this a little bit later as well, is when it gets a little bit past 10 o'clock, you want to use it, obviously, because the timer on Portal is 2 seconds, the timer on Cube is 1.25 seconds, and obviously, you know, 1 fourth of 2 seconds is half a second, so if you just think about it that way, if you do the math, that it's going to be a little bit, it's like 3 eighths through. Uh, but there is a little bit of a delay, because obviously it takes a while to you know, properly aim it. So once it gets past like half or a quarter through, then you can start aiming it and it should get there properly. Uh, you don't want to get it too early, obviously, because you don't want to miss on your dimensional cube. Um, if you don't have portal up, you can kind of just throw it out willy-nilly because the cooldown is relatively short. Uh, at six seconds now, it goes down to four seconds when it's fully upgraded. So you can kind of just throw it out. Uh, you can use it as or in combination with your dimensional walk uh, you go here you slow him down and throw it out there to try to catch him i'll turn on thing just to show you um of course thing just runs right into the building immediately but you can slow him down and kind of throw it ahead like that uh to catch him or what you can do is throw out the ability first and then slow him, but like it shows there uh, it kind of screws up sometimes because you don't have or you have to wait for a moment to cast the cube, which sometimes means you miss your, your dimensional walk. So that can be problematic. Um, if you're running away, I wouldn't really recommend cube, but sometimes you get desperate, you want to throw it at your feet, and then that maybe prevents them from chasing after you. It really depends on what your health is. Maybe if you're like, you know, a quarter health and you can perhaps survive them jumping on you, then this might deter them if you just throw it at your feet and run away. Um, and finally, when do you use Enhanced Portal over Walk? Um, the first is when, or excuse me, Enhanced Cube over Walk, is the first is when you have your portal available and you want to put two cubes on the thing in order to super blow them up. Uh, that's a common use, obviously. And another use is when you're in the middle of like a big team fight and, you know, the the, the bigger rage is going to hit something. Um, it's just, it's it's too good not to... Uh, use in that situation. So in that case, you want to just throw out your big one and Hopefully you get it out and hit multiple people Otherwise, if you're like one-on-one, -on -one, I think you'd rather just use the dimensional walk twice All right, let's get to his ultimate now, which is dimensional portal And this is obviously a huge part of Darcy's identity and a source of great confusion as to how it works especially post patch when they changed the mechanics of it so we'll go over that as well but let's get to the description first so Darcy opens a portal in the target area dealing this amount of damage which is mostly irrelevant after two seconds marked enemies are telep teleported back to their location and this is big because it doesn't put them back to the center of the portal it puts them right where they were, and it's marked on the ground, and that's important because you need to be able to aim your dimensional IQ properly in order to hit them. Um, and then they're stunned for a short period of time, which I tried to time. It's about 0.6 seconds, so if you get your dimensional cube off in a reasonable amount of time, then it should be fine. Uh, the cooldown of the dimensional cube is immediately reset upon using this ability, which is true most of the time. As you can see here, if I use dimensional cube and then dimensional portal, and then dimension I can use dimensional cube again, which is nice. 
But there's an instance in which this is not the case. I'm gonna show you that right now, hopefully. So if I use uh, the cube right here, and then I portal and I got a cube, then this you can see that the cooldown was still going off uh, for a moment there for the second cube. Obviously my cooldowns are very short, so <laughs> it only showed up for a moment there, but you saw that I didn't immediately have the cube back. So don't try to do the thing where you have you use your cube and then you think you're going to get the, the, the triple cube with the portal. That is not going to happen. You can't just cube and then portal and then double cube afterward. It doesn't work like that unless you, well, I guess you could kind of do it uh, because of the cooldown situation, but uh, you still might be like a second late with your third cube. Okay, finishing up, within six seconds of using the ability, Darcy can use it again to teleport himself to the center of the portal and trigger an explosion that deals uh, this amount of damage, which is reasonable, but not a ton if you compare it to the rest of the abilities, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But this is how it works. You throw it out, and then you can teleport whenever you want. You do not have to wait for the first two seconds to expire. You can teleport whenever you want. That's what makes it a good uh, ability to use as an escape as well. So when you use the ability, you can see a little bit, you can see like a timer there that starts at six o'clock and end at six o'clock. Uh, and that's important. So if I, hold on, I'm gonna throw out the abilities here. So I'm gonna stand at, it's gonna, you wanna be, you want the timer to be right around here uh, when you throw out your dimensional cube. And because it takes a second to throw out the dimensional cube, it should be perfectly fine. You don't wanna be too late because sometimes they can have like some abilities that allow them to nullify the stun and then get away. So you wanna be kind of right on time. So right around there um, is perfect. But if you're too, it's better to be a little bit too late than too early because you're probably still gonna hit them anyway. Uh, the worst thing you can do is do like that. That's, that's too early. As you can see, the explosion went off first. Um, and you can, if you're not Darcy, if you're the opposing team, you can tell if you're marked because every person gets a little mark, their own little mini mark on them, as you can see on the monster there. Uh, another thing about the mark is that you, if you throw it on someone in a bush, you can see the little mark in the, uh, in the grass. Actually, I don't think I'm supposed to see thing there. I don't know why I see thing. It's kind of weird. Normally you just see the mark. Anyway, <laughs> if you even if even if Thane wasn't uh, sitting there, hold on, let me try something. So yeah, you can see, huh? Anyway, I'm confused. There should be a little mark uh, in the bush there that displays where he's supposed to go afterward. Okay, you can see that mark there. That's supposed to be in the bushes. Anyway, that was very strange. I'm confused. Let's move on. So. Um, <clears throat> When you are, let's just go back to our notes here. Um, I mentioned this already, enemies teleport to where they were originally uh, while you teleport to the center, so keep that in mind. Uh, your explosion will definitely damage them no matter what, so don't worry about that, but it is important to think about when you're aiming your dimensional cube. Um, and as far as heroes who can get rid of the cube, only heroes who can remove control effects and debuffs are the ones who can get rid of it. So that includes Xanus, Chognar, Kilgroth, Rourke, and Necroth when he uses his ultimate. Uh, the Purify talent can also get rid of it. Uh, one notable exception to this is Superman. His, his ability description is very weird for a second ability. Uh, and it should purify it, but it doesn't. It's very strange. Um, if you're one of these ability, one of these heroes, you can use these abilities whenever. You don't have to time it perfectly to when you get teleported back. You can use it whenever you want, and you will not get teleported back. If you use Rourke's ult, Kilgross ult, Chagnor's one or three, uh, Dennis is one, and the Cross ult. Same thing with purify. Now there are abilities that say they can't be targeted, so they can't cleanse the mark. Um, and they will definitely be teleported back to the location. So that's Sephra using Tide of Life, that's Max using Liftoff, that's Thane using King's Glory, uh, that's Murad using Temporal Turbulence, uh, that's Zill using Tornado, and I'll have those clips up on the screen, or at least most of them. Um, and the thing is, if you... Uh, that also includes uh, Richter's Retaliate, his second ability. Um, now the thing is, for almost all these heroes, if not all these heroes, they won't be stunned when you get back. So it's still worth it to use these abilities. Like for instance, if you get caught, like if you're Sephra uh, and you get caught by the the dimensional portal, you still want to use Tide of Life because what that does is obviously it makes you immune 
when he throws out the dimensional cube, but it also prevents you from getting stunned. So you can immediately just leave. So you still want to pop your ult, at least most of the time. Um, you're probably just going to get one shot if you don't. So I would imagine that you want to do that. That's the greatest source of damage. You don't want to save it for like after, you know, you get, you get hit by the dimensional cube. You want to hit it. You want to use it right beforehand. So if you are these heroes, you still want to use these abilities, but just keep in mind that you will get teleported back to your original location. Okay, let's finally get to the tips for the Dimensional Portal. Now, the first thing you want to keep in mind is that because they'll be returned in two seconds, you don't want to cast your Dimensional Cube too early. It's arguably better to cast a little bit too late because you're still likely to get the damage off than too early because then you'll definitely miss, right? Like, for instance, I'll, I'll deliberately cast this one too early. If you go like this and you just throw it out there, you can see the explosion goes off before she teleported. Um, so you want, what you want to do is if you look at the dimensional timer, dimensional portal timer as a clock, it starts at six and it ends at six, then you want to cast the dimensional cube a little bit past 10 o'clock. Now, technically it should be 1030 if you want to do it exactly perfectly. But if you start at 10 or just, if you think about just past 10 o'clock or even just past nine o'clock, um, if you, you know, get used to it, the, the fact that it takes a while for you to slide the cube over means that you'll probably get it just in time. Like if I start uh, aiming at when it's at nine o'clock, then I should get it fine. Um, <clears throat> although if you get too good at it, then you start thinking, you know, at being at nine o'clock, then you might be a little bit too early. So you gotta be careful about that. But I would suggest going into training and practicing these timings because I've seen lots of Darcy's get into a match, even in rank, they'll, they'll throw it out and they'll be like, oh, oh, and then you miss your, your two and it feels really, really bad because that's the entire point of the portal to begin with. Another, another obvious benefit of going into training is you can do things like, you know, practice the uh, double cube. You go here, throw out one, throw out two. I think that first one was on time, but again, you need to practice these things. Um, and obviously the single cube, you want to do this, prep your uh, dimensional walk and get the damage off as well. So yeah, I would recommend going to training and practicing these things rather than just going straight into a game because you're probably going to mess up because there's so many things going on in the game that it's so easy to just like panic and like throw out the cube and be like, oh my God, I got her. And then, you know, obviously that one would, would have missed anyway and it was early and yeah. It's problematic. So you want to just make sure you have this down before you get into a game before you do that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, second tip, obviously. This one's pretty obvious. You can use it as an escape. You can throw it back. Uh, theoretically, you can throw it forward, too, if someone's, you know, running away. Uh, obviously, that's very, very risky. But, you know, say say you're, like, the last person remaining. It happens a lot with, you know, backline mages because um, they don't... I don't have a chance to get to you. You're the one cleaning up, right? So they're running away and they're too far away. So you go, oh, let me just get to you. And you do that and they you kill them. Um, so you could te technically throw it forward. There's also ways that you can like just mess around with it. Say there's like a hero over here who's kind of low and there's like four heroes there. So you don't want to like mess with all of them. So you like prep it. You dimensional walk forward. You kill the person and then you jump back. So you can like prep it. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff like that if you get really good with the portal. Um, so... It's kind of fun, the, the different ways that you can use Portal. Uh, one thing I know mentioned in the notes as well is you can do some Murad style shenanigans. If you're like way deep in their base and it's like super far away from your own uh, towers and you're like the only one left and there's like five people chasing you, you can like whoop, throw it back, kind of run the opposite direction and be like, just getting over here and then get away. So that's something you can do as well. Uh, last thing is that the, the damage from the, the teleport is decent, but it's not nearly as much as... The rest of your abilities, like you can't, if you throw out your portal and you see like your cube and your one chunked into like a third health, you're not going to finish them off with your, your portal in that case. They have to be like really, like nearly dead for you to finish them off. Um, and a lot of times, even if you do finish them off, you're going to put, be putting yourself in danger. And obviously as Darcy, you're probably going to be the carrier, carry of your team, whether you're mid or your jungle. So you don't want to put yourself in that position. So I would say, I would look at his teleport forward as kind of like a flicker or like a tactical fire uh, for Violet forward. Like most of the time you do not want to teleport forward. Most of the time the damage from your combo should be enough. And if it's not, you don't want to take the chance of jumping forward. So I would say, again, think of it as a flicker. You really need to know what you're doing if you're going to offensively teleport forward. Uh, obviously it's part of the ability, but I would... I would say that like 80% of the time you're not going to use a teleport forward because it's just too dangerous. 
Okay, let's move on to the level progression and laning strategy of Darcy. So, first things first is you're going to choose a Dimensional Cube whether you're in the middle or in the jungle because it just does more damage. Um, and if you're in the middle, you want to be clearing the wave so you can get to level 2 as quickly as possible. If you don't pick Q, you're going to have a tough time clearing the wave. So uh, you're going to be doing that. Obviously, in jungle, you want to be able to use your 2. Also, because if you're trying to use your dimensional walk too often in jungle, you're, gonna, you're going to potentially leash the monsters. Um, leashing the monsters actually becomes sort of an issue once you do get dimensional walk. But typically, you clear so quickly that you're not going to have that, that many dimensional walks to really worry about it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but just make sure you not use the, you don't, make sure you don't use the full dimensional walk when you're clearing monsters, because if they stop targeting you, then they could reset, and that's annoying. Um, once, if you are in mid, once you get your dimensional walk, you can start dueling your opponent in earnest. You can kind of do whatever you want, right? You can u maybe use your, your one for the hero and your two for the wave, uh, you can commit to completely dueling the opponent by, you know, throwing out, doing this, this kind of combo where you throw out your uh, cube after slowing them down. Um, you can do this thing where you throw out the cube and then slow them, but like, like you just saw a good example of why you don't do that because uh, the animation means that you can miss your dimensional walk and that's annoying. So I would say that uh, that is not advice. I would say slow them first and then throw out the uh, dimensional cube. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, actually, this is going back to the building mechanics, but you just saw there that when you do get the double dimensional walk, there's a little bit of delay, so you can't just like spam both back to back. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about whether to use cube or dimensional walk. Um, okay, last thing is, or actually, third to last thing, huh? second to last thing, is that uh, the cooldown and damage are upgraded the exact the same for cube and walk so it's kind of personal preference which you want to upgrade uh, you do get more damage resistance so that's you know a, a point in favor of dimensional walk to upgrade that uh, i think most people would, would upgrade dimensional walk regardless because of the fact that it's it's you want to guarantee damage rather than relying on a cube that you may or may not hit in fights Okay, so finally, the last thing is that once Dimensional Portal is upgraded, you have like tremendous killing power. Uh, just make sure you don't use it just haphazardly, right? Like, make sure you get a good hit off, hit, off, hit off of it. Sometimes I see people just like throw it out randomly trying to get a kill because uh, they're a little bit desperate. Just use it at the right moment because it can completely swing not only a battle but the game. And the, the range is so long that you can really just camp a bush. I mean, you could do this in the pros realistically. There, there's no level I wish... This won't work because of the range is so long. It's so impossible for the opponent to um, avoid this. So yeah, once you get your old, make sure you use it wisely. And make sure you get the kills that you're destined to get, and make sure you don't, you know, waste the Darcy pick. Let's get to some battle strategy. If you are dueling, it's really easy. Just kind of poke people. Even if you're like in, you know, a multiplayer team fights. Uh, you can just use this strategy of poking them from afar because of the insane range that he has. This is 900 units. This is like 1100 units if you consider uh, the radius of the ability. Uh, you can do kind of things like this where, you you know, again, you throw the ability, you throw the slot, then you throw out the cube to hit people. You can kind of just throw out cubes willy-nilly. Uh, a lot of times you'll be using it to zone people out uh, to make sure that they, you know, don't go the direction that you want them. That's, yeah, they don't go the direction that they want to go. Um... Because the cooldown is so low, and then you'll still have obviously the reset if you use portal, so you can kind of use it as much as you want, really, as long as you're getting your dimensional force up and you're and you're replenishing your mana, so you don't have to go back to base. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but again, it bears repeating again. You do not want to be teleporting forward all that often. Again, you need to know what you're doing. You need to know where the rest of the the, the players are uh, before you do that. <clears throat> One more thing that you actually need to know where the rest of the players are is for Dimensional Walk. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't have, I have cooldowns off right now, but if you use it, that's an 8-second cooldown, especially in the early game. So if you're sitting there and you're trying to you know, trade damage with the opposing hero, just make sure there's no heroes while hiding in the bush. You go like this, you hit them, and all of a sudden, you know, the jungler comes out of the bush and kills you, and you have no escape. So keep that in mind. Make sure you know where they are. Um, make sure to hold on to that dimensional walk if you're a little bit confused as to where they might be, and then you can use it to get away when the time arises. <clears throat> okay, 
Um, last thing I'll mention is that if you're playing with a hero that has displacement abilities, like a Baldum or you know Mina or Thane or something, they will definitely be licking their lips when they see people are going to be teleported back. So you got to be careful. Uh, maybe wait for a tick and then see where they they teleport them over, uh, so you can get the hit off. <laughs> Uh, another way is to just get really good at the timing, so it happens like it, the explosion goes exactly off at the right time. So even if they do, you know, displace them, you're still gonna get the damage off. So, um, yeah, I guess <laughs> I guess my advice there is get good. Uh, anyway, just kidding. Just make sure that you know what you're doing when you're playing with a hero that can displace. Last thing, uh, as far as escaping a fight, it's pretty straightforward. If you're in trouble, use dimensional walk. If you don't have dimensional walk, use your portal. Um, when you are running away, again, make sure to get the full value out of Dimension Walk before you use your slow to slow them down, because you're going to be, obviously, denying a lot of damage. They can't auto you, they can't damage you unless they have an ability that, that they purposely aim. So, uh, yeah, it's make sure you get the full value of the Dimensional Walk before you throw out the slow. Let's get into a couple of tips for how to counter Darcy. Uh, one thing I would say is keep tabs on if Dimensional Walk is available. If it is available, then it's really hard to kill him. If you try to jump on him, even with multiple heroes, he can just, oh, bye, see ya. Uh, there is the possibility, if you have the the ability to chain CC of killing him, because he is probably not going to have Gilded Griefs. So if you can chain CC, you can potentially kill him before you can even use Dimensional Walk, but that's obviously pretty hard to do, and it's it requires a lot of coordination. So I would say, if you're trying to go after him, have someone be the bait, have someone be the fall man, or maybe he uses it on the mini wave or something, uses his dimensional walk, and then you jump in and you take him out because he won't have any way to get out of there. Um, and he might use his portal to get out, but then you've made him use his ult as well. Um, if you or an ally is caught in dimensional portal, your immediate <laughs> instinct is to run away, but that's a bad instinct because you're going to be teleported back anyway. Uh, the better thing to do is to stun him or push him away because that will mess up his timing on the dimensional cube or put him so far away that he can't actually put the cube onto the portal. So you want to stun him, you want to push him out of the way. If you Keep that in mind, support. If your ally gets messed up, uh, make sure you stun the Darcy so that he can't get his abilities off in time and that might allow for your your allies or maybe even yourself to be able to run away scot-free because he won't be able to get off his dimensional cube on time or on target. Uh, last thing is a little thing uh, be careful when he goes in dimensional walk because if you're used to just auto aiming stuff then you're going to miss. Um, I've, I've tested this out it, because you cannot target him if you you'll just kind of fire whatever you're using in that in direction you're facing or at whatever minion or monster is nearby so yeah be careful especially if you're like you know hayate or like joker or something with a very thin line you're not going to hit him in that case arcana for darcy is very straightforward you go for violet for red you go for flurry for green they're just obviously the best ones and for purple you can argue for sap devour benevolence gorilla uh, Sap and Devour, they offer you magic lifesteal, but you sh if you're jungling, you should be healing off of the jungle. And if you're in the mid lane, then you should have Phoenix tier. So that should be your source of healing, and obviously you can heal off of your passive if you use Dimensional Walk. So the best is likely Gorilla. Uh, Gorilla provides you 10% movement speed if you have 10 of those. And the 10% attack speed is not useless either because if you have greater attack speed, it allows you to get your the attack from your dimensional walk off faster. Um, and you can go in training and test that. I'm not going to show you now because it's too lazy. Uh, but you actually act, you do attack faster if you have uh, faster attack speed, and that could make the difference, especially if you're trying to damage someone. Let's move on to items, and these are actually pretty straightforward as well. Uh, starting off with Apocalypse, if you're not using Apocalypse on Darcy, I don't know what you're doing. He has an empowered attack, it has 900 range, Apocalypse is really good on him. Uh, you use your dimensional walk and it gets super duper empowered. Uh, next obvious item is obviously if you're jungling, you're going to be using Loki's Curse, same reason. It actually incentivizes jungling over uh, going to the mid lane in a way. Um, 
because you have those uber duber attacks. Uh, next item I would say, which is basically required for all mages if you're going to do real damage, is Hecate's Diadem. Obviously for the Warlock passive, you want to be multiplying that damage as much as possible. Um, next item, after those three items, these items start getting less mandatory, but uh, the next item on the list I would say is really good is Boomstick, because it will be, it empowers your dimensional walk to do AoE damage, basically. If you didn't know, um, the reason why heroes like Raz, for instance, get, or they prefer Boomstick, or even something like Vera, um, Prefers boom sticks because Vera's ult is single target, or I mean, it, it can hit up to five targets, but each little bat is like one target. Um, Raz's fireball is his power surge is one target, so you want to make that into an AOE move. And even if you have AOE abilities, um, you can make it so that the explosion from the explosion passive from Boomstick can hit as many people as possible. So it's good for turning a uh, single target into AoE, turning AoE into more damage. Um, the only real downside is that there's no CDR and there's no defense, but uh, you make up for the CDR by usually going for flashy boots. If you really want to up the damage, you go enchant the kicks, but I prefer having the CDR as quickly as possible. So I would <clears throat> go either uh, Loki's Curse, Flashy Boots, Apocalypse, or if I'm in lane, I would likely go over the Magi and then Flashy Boots and then Apocalypse. Uh, speaking of over the Magi, uh, if you are not jungling, that's one of the items that you'll probably want to get. Uh, if you might want to go Phoenix tier first uh, and then go into straight into Apocalypse just for that damage right off the bat and then go back to over the Magi. It seems kind of intuitive because you want to be ramping up the damage from over the Magi, but it only takes five minutes uh, to get it up there, so it's not you know the biggest thing in the world. Uh, other possibilities, if you're looking at you know finishing out your build with the last couple of items, um, there's multiple possibilities. Obviously, if you want to play a little bit more uh, safe, you go for Rhea's Blessing. Um, you can also get the healing to make sure you stay on the field. Don't have to rely on your enhanced dimensional walk. Um, Holy of Folies is really nice. Obviously, it's super expensive, but the because he's so slippery, just having this extra HP will actually help him stay alive long enough. So Holy Flowies is a very nice hybrid item for him because he doesn't need that much damage as long as you're playing him properly. But that will provide you enough uh, defense to be able to get away while obviously providing you ridiculous amounts of ability power. It's 540 if you include the benefit of Hecate's Diadem. Obviously other choices are Barris for that little bit of defense as well. Um, Arctic Orb is, I, I've i seen it in some like recommended builds. I don't really, not really sure why, because if you go for Arctic Orb and you try to run away with, you know, Dimensional Walk, you turn on Arctic Orb and then they catch up to you and then you're like, oh. <laughs> so I would say Arctic Orb, probably not the best. Um, maybe you're in a crazy doable summon and you need to get two Dimensional Walks off and you need to, uh, you know, you need to bridge the gap between those two dimensional walks. I suppose that could be a case, but I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, obviously, another offensive option is Staff of Newell, because in the build, or in the items I just showed you, uh, there's no peer. So if you're fighting yourself, <clears throat> having a hard time getting to the back line, or they're not stepping forward for you to catch into your dimensional portal, then you just break through the front door and you kill all the frontliners by getting Zaf of Newell and chunking them down. So if you put all of those um, items together, uh, the build that I would like, it's almost all damage, but trust me, it works pretty well as long as you are careful when you're positioning, careful with how you play him. Uh, and again, you can play super careful with Darcy and still be extremely effective because you, you can just damage people from so incredibly far away so this is the build it's super greedy but it's super effective and with this build with 30 sex boom <laughs> look at telenos it's so ridiculous guys it is so nuts how much damage you could do with this build uh good night yeah it's <laughs> it's just hilarious 
that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching all the way up to the end of this nearly one hour video. I promise I didn't mean to make it this long. But again, thank you so much. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Make sure you go to d2aov.com. Make sure you actually tune in to the Valor Series finals this weekend, uh, which I'll be casting so you can see me there. And I will see you guys next time.